Hello dear students, welcome to the class on antifungal drugs. In this class, let's discuss about echinocandins. So coming to the specific learning objectives for today's session, at the end of this class, you should be able to classify echinocandins. You should be able to explain the mechanism of action of echinocandins. You should be able to explain the pharmacokinetics uses and adverse effects with Echinocandins. So these echinocandins are the new class of potent semi-synthetic antifungal antibiotics. They are made up of complex cyclic lipopeptide structure. They have got low toxicity when compared with the amphotericin B. So what are the echinocandins? So those are caspofungin, micafungin, and Anidula fungin. So, coming to the caspofungin, which is a first and prototype member of the echinocandin class, they are active mainly against the candida as, as well as aspergillus infections. They are also effective in the strains of candida which have become resistant to azoles. Next, moving on to the mechanism of action of caspofungin. So these echinocandins mainly inhibit the synthesis of beta-1,3 glucon, which is a unique component of fungal cell wall. So these beta glucons are synthesized in the fungal uh, plasma membrane. And these echinocandins, especially the prototype drug that is caspofungin, will inhibit the beta glucon synthase enzyme, which is required for synthesis of the beta-1,3 glucons. So basically you should remember in background that the toughness of the fungal cell wall is maintained by cross-linking between the chitin which is a fibrillary polysaccharide and beta-1,3 glucon. By inhibiting the synthesis of beta-1,3 glucon by inhibiting the beta glucon synthase enzyme, they weaken the fungal cell wall thereby it leads to the increased osmotic susceptibility of fungal cells and then it succumbs. So coming to the pharmacokinetic property of caspofungin, they are not absorbed orally, they are infused through intravenous route. Every time you should prepare a freshly prepared aqueous solution of caspofungin, it gets distributed into the tissues but remember it does not enter the CSF. It has got extensive metabolism and the metabolites are excreted through urine as well as feces and the T-off will be for 10 hours. So coming to the uses of caspofungin, they are the preferred uh, drugs as of now for the treatment of deep and invasive candidiasis, esophageal candidiasis and also as a salvage therapy for non-responsive invasive aspergillosis and also used in neutropenic immunocompromised patients whose fever is not responding to antibacterial antibiotics. These caspofungins are preferred uh, in, in neutropenic patient because of its good tolerability. So coming to the adverse effects of uh, caspofungin, it can cause acute febrile reactions sometimes following the IV infusion. It can cause thrombophlebitis of injected vein and it can also cause rashes, vomiting, dyspnea, hypokalemia as well as joint pain. So remember the patient acceptability with caspofungin is very good and also the organ toxicity is not seen when compared with the amphotericin which was causing nephrotoxicity. So coming to the other groups of uh, echinocandins, that is micafungin, the only uh, the difference between caspofungin and micafungin will be uh, micafungin is a longer acting drug. The T of is around 12 to 15 hours, whereas uh, caspofungin had a T of of 10 hours. So micafungin can be indicated in esophageal candidiasis, candidemia, as well as prophylaxis of candida infections in bone marrow transplant patient but not preferred in case of aspergillosis. And last one is the anidola fungin which has got longer 
20 of of around 36 hours and the indication is similar to that of the gaspo fungin so coming to the summary echinocandens examples are gaspo fungin mica fungin and anidola fungal fungin and uh, they differ in the plasma t of gaspo fungin has got 10 hours mica fungin is still a more longer acting that is 12 to 15 hours and anidola fungin will act for longer duration of time than the other two drugs for about 36 hours so they are mainly indicated in the treatment of candidial as well as aspergillus infection they can also be used uh, in the treatment of uh, those candidial infection uh, that are resistant to azoles the basic mechanism of action is they are going to inhibit the synthesis of beta 1 3 glucon by inhibiting the beta glucon synthase enzyme they are mainly the route of administration will be through intravenous. Thank you.